Okay, um, welcome back everyone. We will uh, continue with the last section here. Uh, and, uh, you know, that again, you know, though it's the last section, it's not something we can rush through. Uh, really wonderful insights for us, especially those of us who want to get into church planting. Uh, you know, this will make a world of a difference uh, for us, you know, to, to study and learn. So chapter 29, this is more about uh, reaching out reaching out to other churches, reaching out to the city, you know, so on and so forth. So here, uh, reaching out to other local churches um, from the word of God. You know, if you would uh, read through this chapter, you would see the examples of um, churches reaching out to one another. So uh, in the New Testament, we, we know that um, the church of Jerusalem, it reached out to the newer churches that were emerging. So Samaria, when people heard the gospel there, and Philip uh, did a wonderful ministry there, uh, Peter and John were sent you know, to go and uh, continue building people up, discipling them. Um, they went and they asked them, hey, uh, let's pray for the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So they ministered that and uh, let the church develop further. So spiritual, spiritual input is something that a church can give another church. Okay, So that is uh, something that can be um, provided. We could send out people. So let's say that in our church, you know, God has raised up uh, prophets. God has raised up teachers. God has raised up, you know, um, uh, like evangelists. Uh, we may want to send them to other churches for a period of time to strengthen that local church. For example, Jerusalem sent Barnabas okay, to Antioch. And then eventually Barnabas found Paul. He brought him also. And this was a, a multicultural church. Uh, it was growing. You know, it was, it was um, beginning to uh, to um, you know develop in the things of God but the strong leaders came in and they they imparted like anything so the the church was strengthened and it became that missions base also now, initially it was all about Church of Jerusalem Church of Jerusalem but then Antioch also became uh, city in Antioch it became a strong church so in that way we could send people out not just the resources but also people can be sent out to strengthen local churches uh, also money, Support can be sent. Okay, we know that the, for the smaller churches, uh, as we just discussed, it could be quite challenging to uh, have that financial support. No matter how many people come, you know, we see that in the in the smaller churches, the rural churches, because people don't earn that much. So even if they give the offering, uh, the pastor may not be able to sustain himself and the ministry. So financial uh, support can be very helpful uh, to certain churches. Now, uh, there can be special financial offerings. We see that the Macedonian church, the Corinthian church, they raised funds to support the church of Jerusalem when there was a famine. So in like, for example, now COVID happened, that's a special support. So maybe in moments like that, the larger churches who have some uh, money can give it to the people who don't have so special support can go out uh, and you know traveling ministers every now and then we can send out teams that will go and strengthen people in God's word so how does this help you know, this helps in strengthening in maturing local churches mm. It helps in building relationships, right? So we can relate to uh, uh, one another. We uh, can, you know, grow together. Uh, so that that also really um, helps. Uh, just a moment. Yeah. So it 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 really helps in that way. Um, of course, sharing of material. Uh, now. Material might mean, you know, sometimes this happens. We have an extra sound system and a local church in a, in a rural area, they need a sound system and they can't buy it. But we have a decently, you know, a, a good uh, sound system only with us. We just changed to a more upgraded one. So we might just want to give it off to the smaller church because they need it. So in this way, you know, we can also relate by strengthening them with their material resources, you know, uh, sending them money, so on and so forth. But one of the things that we must uh, keep in mind is the divine order. Divine order, we've talked about it, isn't it? The boundaries, God's boundaries, how the pastor of the local church is 
is the person in charge and the person in authority. So we can't go and disrupt the order which has already been uh, established. So even if we are invited to go and preach, we must be mindful of the way the pastor has developed the church so far. So uh, we have to honor that. We can't come and do our own thing. So divine order is very important when we work with churches. You know, always ask the question, pastor, is this OK? Uh, you know, this is what we are planning to do. So when you have a discussion with them, you'll understand. Uh -huh, OK, fine. You know, I can do it this way. I'm not going to disrupt what this pastor has done o over the years. Okay, So divine order is something very, very important for us to bear in mind when we work with other local churches. Now, coming to chapter 30 here, which is about shepherding the city once again. We have looked at this in depth. Now, uh, one of the um, uh, things that is happening globally is people migrating to cities. Okay, and this is this is you can study it not just for the sake of church planting, but you know, uh, for marketing and all. People are just uh, you know going after this because we are understanding that a lot is happening in the cities, uh, and and you know. Uh, like you, you find that it is estimated 75% of the world's population lives in cities. So if there is an impact that can be made in the cities, naturally that will go and impact other uh, small towns and rural areas as well. So a lot can be done in cities. And therefore, for us uh, as, as believers, you know, to shepherd the city becomes very, very important. And we've uh, talked about the importance of the citywide church, you know, the way God looks at the city. If you look at Revelation, when God speaks to different churches, he's speaking to the church of the city. He says, OK, Smyrna. Uh, you know, Pergamos, that's the city. So he's not addressing individual local churches, but the citywide church. So uh, to be strong as a citywide church and to make an impact in all the spheres, the seven mountains, you know, we've, we've said the business uh, area, the family area, the arts and entertainment, the media, politics. So when we make an impact as a citywide church on all these uh, seven spheres, that can lead to transformation of the entire city. So that's how we must think. We must think as kingdom builders, not just, I know this chapter is about the local church and strengthening the local church, but, you know, Local churches can partner. Local churches, citywide church can uh, be one. So unity is important. You know, Jesus said that if a kingdom is divided against itself, then how can it stand? Uh, so today, just uh, uh, this thought is coming to me now. Uh, recently, one of the pastors, in fact, one of our, our own pastors, uh, there was, uh, I don't know if you heard about it, but there were miscreants, they came and they tried to disrupt the Sunday service. So I was just asking him, Pastor, how did you manage uh, when this happened? So he said, oh, not a problem, sister. I, I have really good relationships with other pastors. So he called up, he called up one particular pastor when this is happening in the Sunday service. OK, so he called up one of the uh, he or I don't know if one of his teammates called up another pastor. That pastor immediately called up the police station and the police came and they provided protection. So he was telling me that they, they have such good relationships that, that if something happens to one pastor, others will come. They will be there to help. So he was saying, you know, this is very beautiful. This has helped. Uh, of course, we would need, then he informed us and all, but it's later, right? Like immediately they need somebody to step in. And it was possible because of the great relationship that he maintains with other pastors. And these other pastors are not from ARC. They are just, you know, they have their own churches. They are from other networks. They, are, uh, they have their own independent churches. But you see the value of a citywide church, kingdom mindset. They are there for each other. Okay. And they're not uh, divided that, hey, this is my church, that is your church. When there is a challenge, they, they are ready to stand up for one another. So that is what you know we're talking about. We're talking about the unity. How can a kingdom stand in a, in a city if it is divided? A house cannot stand. We have to be united and we have to maintain that, that unity of the spirit. Remember, we talked about that Ephesians 4.3 uh, in, in kingdom builders. With fervor, we have to maintain that unity. And also when it comes to the things in the city, um, uh, together. 
we we can collaborate we can provide the know how the resources uh, we can join hands together and make a difference you know uh, various issues uh, and uh, we can impact the city uh, we need to have a kingdom mindset uh, we've said that you know the barriers the the uh, barriers that we have in our own minds you know, we have to uh, remove that and become scripture based and scripture encourages working along with others collaborative efforts so kingdom mindset should be developed uh, and uh, you know we we spoken about this right when we said okay how are we going to develop that unity uh, we can have gatherings of pastors and it's not just gatherings but you know real relationships genuine relationships beyond just you know some structural uh, and event based things so real relationships with uh, pastors and leaders uh, as you know brothers and sisters when we have those relationships the unity is strengthened yeah uh, so yeah in this way we are able to establish god's work in the city uh, now coming to chapter 31 which is about urban evangelism uh, we've already seen that the cities are thriving okay and uh, there needs to be a strong work done in cities so there are a lot of models today if you look at um, you know the the global church there are you know different networks for evangelism and uh, people are trying out you know in different cities how to plant churches uh, and uh, you know so many people are stepping forward and and that's really wonderful and heartening to see now uh, what are some of the evangel urban evangelism steps that one can take you now we are going to talk about that so since god is interested in cities he wants to uh, see a transformation of cities and when cities are impacted uh, you know the 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 uh, gospel can go out to other parts easily even if you look at the book of acts you would notice that Uh, Paul and the team they generally went to cities they went to a uh, Philippi they went to you know uh, Thessalonica they they went to those Corinth uh, Ephesus Athens these are all prominent cities because it was it, uh, the first thing is it's easy to go there you have transportation you can easily reach those cities uh, but also you know a lot of trade was going on in that place so when the church was established in those cities people would come in they would go out you know they would take it the church of ephesus where you know paul taught for a for a while uh, many people were impacted in fact you read that asia large parts many regions were impacted because of his teaching there in one city so it's easy for people to come in Uh, you know and uh, develop and take it back with them so when you look at india we can be very strategic i know there is some statistics here uh, but uh, most probably it's uh, you know changed now i think but uh, it's probably from 2011 census and they uh, i don't think there's been another census since so uh, here uh, we have listed out in india based on the population of of cities and a few other criteria you have tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 cities tier 1 are the major metropolitan cities like your delhi mumbai kolkata uh, chennai hyderabad uh, bengaluru uh, you also have tier 2 cities which are close by you know they they coming up very fast uh, and uh, uh, industries are looking to have their setups in tier 2 in fact because you have uh, cheaper labor but you have greater impact so when the business world is looking at a tier 2 cities why shouldn't the church consider uh, you know uh, also being strategic so tier 2 cities you have tier 3 cities uh, so i mean basically be led by god's spirit and go where god is leading us but it's good to know you know uh, that that uh, all this um, information is also available for us so then we could uh, consider the demographics and and you know uh, the spiritual aspects the strategic aspect like what what um age group you know uh, of people does this city consist of uh, what are the communities you know what are the challenges so basically we understand uh, that and then uh, depending on what might help and strengthen you know the the mission there we will go with those those uh, steps events processes and all of that so be innovative you know in order to reach out to people there um 
yeah so we can be strategic like for example when we go to a, a certain city um, and want to establish a church there we might notice that uh, the language the spoken language is uh, i'm just giving example okay spoken language is um, hindi okay but then there are a lot of college going students uh, who speak english so part of urban mission strategically even though the local language is hindi you might want to plant an english church because uh, you know people do understand english and um, you know it, uh, there are many colleges in that place and uh, it's it's coming up in the next 5 years so you think long term okay fine you know if i have an english congregation here will it grow in the next 5 years in the next 10 years you might want to pick english as your main language and you'll begin to notice that yeah you know the church is actually thriving so uh, be innovative be very very strategic understand the place understand in the next 5 years in the next 10 years what will be the uh, you know how will how will this place be and based on that you plan your church uh, and then you know there are some Uh, events and programs listed here this is from apc but again you know you can have your own innovative way there are corporate prayer fellowships coffee talks you know, coffee talks uh, we are, the gatherings that uh, we have uh, in coffee shops like coffee day you just meet with young people there uh, on a, on a periodic basis and discuss topics uh, you know um, self esteem relationships they might feel more comfortable to discuss things over there so um, in, uh, and they might also feel comfortable to invite their unsaved friends coffee talks is something we've done so see you see this is all urban urban strategic innovative way of thinking catalyst um, you are probably aware that's our uh, children's ministry where in schools uh, we we have volunteers from church they go uh, and we have worked with the the school to have um, an hour or two hours every week you know on biblical principles and uh, the schools have agreed so we make a timetable and every week we have volunteers going to uh, you know different schools and they are teaching okay and uh, you know it's wonderful to hear the testimonies that have come out of uh, catalyst children were impacted mm, children ask for prayer children have a lot of questions they ask questions you know why did god let sin come into the world so their questions are answered so we are, we are able to uh, impact them and even you know uh, uh, disciple entire schools campus elevates uh, where we've been able to take uh, by biblical principles through youth services and uh, you know impact students then chrysalis workshops chrysalis is our counseling uh, wing they have uh, you know different subjects like marriage parenting um counseling and recently i i think something to do with mental health is is uh, also coming up so uh this is our counseling wing and you know in cities we have this challenge and in fact you know bangalore is known as a suicide capital mm, so you can imagine there are needs there are uh, needs uh, in that urban place and the church can make an impact so we can be strategic urban youth conferences um big sundays so you know there's that whole list of things and miracle and healing services uh, so uh, also here i think one must be a little careful because um, in some places when you say healing uh, it can be misunderstood like if you're calling for a healing crusade or something some pastors have gotten into trouble uh, so yeah you, we have to be very careful though so you you know if um uh, if you know it sends out the wrong message then uh, you could rather have a call it a prayer service right so you just invite people let them pray and if they experience healing in their bodies then they would understand uh, you know that god's supernatural power is is at work today so think think be strategic uh, be wise uh, and uh, see what you know the need of the places and what is possible to be done by us and uh, you know bless people and don't do anything which it goes against the uh, law of the land we try our best to uh, abide by all all the uh, rules okay next is church planting and missions this also is a very very uh, important topic here so missions is when we are reaching out to places where people don't know god so uh, basically we 
are winning souls for the kingdom of God. But in addition to that, missions uh, is also to do with discipling and equipping of believers, new ch church plants across the the country, across the world, and uh, you know we we can also work alongside pastors and leaders to strengthen them in the work that they are doing. Uh, so this this is what missions is. Um, the way we can engage in missions is you basically cast a vision to your church family and tell them, hey, we are going to step out on missions. This is what we are going to do. We will go on mission trips. We will um, meet the spiritual needs of people. We will meet. Well, maybe there are some physical needs that one could meet, or you can use your profession, your career, mm, uh, to go and help. Uh, maybe we are good, you know, with with uh, financial things or administrative things. We go to a church that pastor does not know how to do these things, so we offer support. Okay, come on, let me help you. This is how you can have your structure. This is how you can, you know, do your admin work. So they are strengthened. So in different ways, we can actually go ahead and strengthen. Uh, and you know, Jesus that we are the sent ones. Right? The way the Father sent him, he sent the uh, the disciples and we we know the great commission is for every believer and scriptures also say that we are ambassadors we are the sent ones of god to establish his kingdom so we go out and we do the work now this is um something that i'm going to take a little more time on planting preparing to plant a church so uh if any of you uh is is planning to do this if you're called to plant a church here are some you know good um insights for you Okay, we go into the details that there is one section called church planting practical guidance. So I'll go more into depth, uh, you know, into that. But the earlier sections, I'll just kind of scan through them. So uh, when we are preparing to plant a church, some basic things are that I need to be sure that, you know, this is God calling me to do it. So recognize Recognize that call of God. Mm, prepare yourself spiritually for that. Mm, then uh, uh, you understand you know, wherever God is sending us. We have to understand the terrain. Okay, spiritually, oh, how are these people? Uh, and uh, you know, what are some of the strategic things that I can do? So I would need to prepare, work on that. Mm, I would need to develop a plan. Uh, and once I get there, maybe I have something planned out on paper based on my two or three visits to the place. But once I get there, uh, I may need to adapt also, you know, make some slight uh, fine tuning here and there uh, and uh, plan the church. Uh, it is ideal that uh, one goes with the team. So if you have a few people who have the same burden, many times it, it ends up being a couple, right? Like husband and wife both have a vision, they have a burden, they go. So more than that sometimes it's two couples three couples they go together there's a lead pastor but you know under the guidance of that lead pastor the team goes and they they minister or a set of three four young people they decide okay we are going to plant they go so it's it's better if you have a team but if you don't then you know it's still okay if god is given the burden then step out mm. so when it comes to finances uh if, if uh, one is independent, then uh, they could initially think of tent making. Tent making is Paul's example. You know, Paul, Aquila, Priscilla, and Corinth. Um, uh, you know, you you find them that uh, you find that uh, uh, they were actually um, making tents and they were serving uh, in the ministry. So it basically they were getting their income through another source. Uh, and that was supporting them. That is a possibility. One can do that, and then you know they uh, they are able to continue the work till such time that you're unable to give time to your uh, tent making or your profession, and uh, ministry work is increased, and maybe the income in the ministry is also increased. So at that point, you are able to switch and uh, take a you know reasonable salary from the uh, church. So uh, tent making is a good option when one plants a. Uh, in the planting stage of a local church. 
uh now you may want to keep it that way throughout and that's that's uh, a choice one needs to make mm, be be led by god in that uh also we could identify and work with the people the local people there so generally when we go to a place we might find that god has already done some work there and people might come up to us and say hey wow it's great that you came uh, uh you know take my place i've been praying for somebody to come so learn to partner with the locals whom god has already prepared uh, and uh, you know that way the kingdom work can be strengthened and of course we can demonstrate the power of the gospel generally the way a church starts off in the book of acts we see that you know there was um, uh, uh salvation there was uh, you know healing there was deliverance uh, you know paul went and the demon possessed girl was healed and then you know people started coming they started listening to what this person had to say uh, you know uh, so different things like that demonstrating the power of god uh, we see a lot of that in scripture and that's how the church actually starts off because people understand that oh wow you know here is somebody they are teaching us about god and we are seeing miracles taking place and healings taking place and all of that okay let's go you know let's experience i'll, I'll invite a friend the church is start thriving so demonstrate the power of god um uh, in addition to that if you feel that you know you need some uh, publicity to get your uh, church launched you could take um, the help of uh, mass media you know put flyers in newspapers or put an ad in the newspaper television um or uh, and also you know if you want to engage in other things maybe do some medical missions depending on the need of the place you know you you kind of uh, step in so here are the practical points that we want to share so uh, we have a weekend school in fact church planting so anyone who's interested and you're able to attend it you're, you're most welcome to do it when it happens but uh, here are some points from uh, the church planting aspect so you one needs to pray a uh, survey and plan how they're going to uh, go ahead with this church planting uh, so survey means as i already said you know, what age group what communities what is their spiritual status uh, all that needs to be clear and then you work out a plan and i've also i think shared that there are some teams that take about 6 months just to pray so maybe we find a hall and the only thing the team does for 6 months is pray spiritual warfare you know, just uh, pray over the city sing over the city and uh, let let god spirit begin to work so till such time there's no preaching there's no inviting people nothing only prayer goes on in that particular place uh, and then you know you might have the idea of stepping out and having your first service okay uh, relating to christian leaders in the area so it is very important generally when we have our church planters go out we tell them go visit your your other pastors in that place greet them uh, you know take something for them wish them so because we we want to establish good relationships right because we are here to strengthen them and when we are in need definitely you know god would use them to speak into our lives bless us as well so establish good relationships uh, and um, if there is a a pastors fellowship or a you know some kind of a gathering generally most cities have that uh, see if you can be a part of it because then we can all grow together so uh, that is also something to look out for then clearly express your primary purpose so this means that when we go to a certain place we might uh, you know meet other leaders christian leaders there and they they'll ask us okay brother why have you come sister why have you come to the city what is your plan uh express the intention correctly and clearly so let them know that god has put it in your heart to plant the church there now some of them may like it some of them may not like it but at least you're telling them the truth from the beginning otherwise what happens if we say oh, i just came to start a bible study they trust us and then we we'll start a bible study and before you know it it's growing and then we have a venue and then there's a church they'll be shocked they'll be like but you said bible study and you're running a church here you know so uh, that trust you no know, it gets affected so it's better to tell people what we are planning so if you are planting a church tell them i'm here to plant a church 
so that way they also will respect ha this person truthful they are honest uh, they told us what they want to do and uh, here they are doing it so um, be clear mm. so in the initial period um, it's good always to start your work you know sometimes what happens people just dilly dally they go to the place and then they're like yeah let me take a few months but what happens is that passion and fervor with which one went there you know over time we might observe different things and get discouraged no i can't do it it's too difficult so as soon as you decide you go you start okay don't have any delay uh, in uh, you know taking that that vision and you know starting off the works so just start the work there mm. many ways in which one can get started you may want to go door to door uh, you know praying for people um, or you might want to start a, a small like a, a you know prayer service invite people let them come uh, over there when we pray then people are touched or you might just want to start your sunday services uh, and invite people put it in the newspaper saying hey we are starting a sunday service here that way you know people start coming mm, uh, or a house church you know you initially you start a house church people start off once your uh, uh, it's a sizable congregation then you go to a hall and then you start your work there so some way find your method of launching out mm, and also be very very careful because sometimes what happens mm, there are people who are part of other local churches when we go to a city and they start attending our church right and then it brings a lot of uh, ill feeling between pastors they'll think oh look at this young chap he came and uh, he is now taking people from our church and he is building his church you know such things can happen so uh, it's it's we have to be careful okay who's coming our intention is you know when you see um, um uh work of the apostles they went to new places they went where the gospel was not preached and that was their desire to go to new places uh, it's not about competing try to find a place where there's nobody else but if there is somebody and god has put that place on your heart then be careful so that we don't try to uh, um, draw people from other churches uh, observe okay who's coming to my church try to avoid it as much as possible if in that city in a certain place there are lots of churches then don't plant your church there go find another place far away uh, but strategic enough and invite people there so you have new people coming in and not people from other churches uh, we could also encourage like once you find out that somebody is from a certain local church you can encourage them hey <laughs> you're welcome to visit but we encourage you to you know stay faithful to your local church you can even announce it i know that at apc for the longest time we we announced it and even now you know we we do that we announce and let people know if that you're looking for a home church then yes you're you're welcome to consider all people's church mm. and also uh, be very careful because sometimes uh, some believer in that place might say uh, you can use my home you have your bible study here or you have your prayer meeting here now they might already be part of another church we are getting ourselves into trouble okay so uh, be careful these are all subtle things we don't think about it when we we'll get excited oh somebody has opened up their home uh, and we don't even know that they belong to another church right so we need to be conscious of all these things these are all practical matters that will help us and also be uh, careful and uh, definitely there are people whom god has prepared because we've read this right in kingdom builders the vision it's not independent but we are interconnected we are interlinked so if god has put something in my heart god has put something in the heart of another person too now they might come and join with us and we together will do the uh, ministry there but when we go to a certain place people might come up to us and say oh i'll join you you know i'll do this i'll do that make me a part of your team but even though people are stepping forward be discerning you know it is best to take things very very slow so just observe their commitment observe you know their uh, um way of working lot of things before we we join hands and say yeah come on let's sign this agreement you and i are a team so take it slow be discerning don't make promises people will come up and say i i can also preach this and that you can't immediately say okay come i'll be the lead pastor you be the associate you know i'll give you so much salary don't be 
quick because later on if we find out that you know there's some issues you know trust issues um, money issues then it's very uncomfortable to get out of the deal so it's best to be slow to get into a deal right so observe and if you feel over a period of time yes this is genuine uh, this is a genuine individual join up team up with them and serve god mm. yeah and also another practical thing is if the uh, if we decide to do a house meeting then just be mindful of the neighbors you know it shouldn't become an issue in terms of sound in terms of parking uh, right uh, it it happens and then people are so upset you know the unbelievers around us they like oh these people uh, don't know what uh, you know they are doing they they making a nuisance in the neighborhood so we shouldn't get that bad name so be sensitive you know about all these matters then when it comes to finding a venue for church one practical advice is uh, we could look out for um it depends on the target audience okay so if you feel that your audience will will not come uh, to let's say you're building a church and it looks like a cathedral and your people will not come your target audience in that city will not enter you know that that kind of an architecture then you just opt for a hall or you maybe you want to pick an auditorium people are willing to come to an auditorium so we have to be strategic it totally depends on the place so where should you have the church is it easy accessible for people to come if your target audience is people like let's say college going uh, people and they want to come uh, but if you are going to go so far away that they have to pay for transport every time to to come for worship they may not like to come so you know things like that so whoever is wanting to come willing to come we have to make it easier for them so pick a place strategically and initially it might be helpful to have it in some schools uh, because you know some schools here they um, and you know particularly christian schools they allow you to do their services and some of them don't even charge so that might be a good option if you're just starting off a school hall and you start your work there and it's uh, once you grow larger then uh, you know with their permission you can step out and do it in a commercial place where there's a rent and uh, all of that mm, yeah also uh, keeping the landlord informed you know they shouldn't be taken by surprise you're renting a house uh, or a hall and they don't know that you're a church and then they, when they start seeing the activities uh, they might be upset so communicating all these things really really uh, clearly and uh, sign agreements right uh, lease agreement rental agreement all that keep your papers in order mm, then have your formal launch invite people over yeah so those are some practical aspects there so uh, i know we have 8 minutes uh, and i'll quickly touch um, upon this last chapter here and then we'll come back to you know questions on the on the uh, practical aspects so the last lesson uh, 33 Uh, chapter thirty-three. This is um, about what God spoke to the seven churches in the book of Revelation. So, uh, a reminder for us, you know, to to maintain these things, um, uh, to be careful about what God has instructed them. So one to the church of Ephesus, God said, maintain, you know, your first love. So, things should not become uh, mundane and uh, you know an obligation. But as a local church, we have to maintain that first love for God and His kingdom. The church of Smyrna, God encouraged to uh, stand through persecution. So, be faithful unto death because it's not going to be an easy journey. Uh, church planting and you know establishing a church. There can be times when a very life is threatened but to be strong and bold and stand unto death church in pergamos you know god warned them against wrong doctrine uh, so same thing applies to us today we have to maintain uh, it is our responsibility to maintain uh, the right doctrine okay and uh, establish strong people uh, and keep god's house clean in terms of the doctrine that is Taught and church in uh, Thyatira uh, guard against demonic spirits. So here there is a warning against uh, a Jezebel, Jezebel who is preaching, bringing in, seducing, um, teaching. So this spirit of Jezebel has to do with you know 
teaching and seducing people away from God. Now, we know that the Jezebel spirit, you know, it's not necessarily something gender specific, but it's more to do with a demonic influence that comes through teaching. So when the teaching is leading people away from God, right? It is seducing people away from God. That's the teaching we don't want. So uh, the church of Taitira is warned against, you know, the Jezebel spirit and the religious spirit. Religious spirit is, uh, the Pharisees are a classic example, you know, self-deceived, hypocritical, man-pleasing attitude, um, uh, and a lot of pretense. So uh, that is also something that we must guard the church against. The church of Sardis, um, this is in Revelation 3, no, we are taught here that we must not be fooled by our reputation because God told this church, you know, you have a reputation to be alive, but you are actually dead. So we shouldn't go by reputation, but let God assess us through and through and let God find us alive. Okay, Church in Philadelphia, uh, who is encouraged to hold fast and persevere. The Laodicean church, which is encouraged to be red hot for God and not to become complacent. You know, uh, sometimes you, you kind of become self-sufficient. You don't want to uh, step forward, step out, you know, from the status quo. And that's not what God is. As the church should be red hot at all times, uh, not lukewarm or cold. Because God says that I will spit you out. So we as leaders, you know, we have to ensure that the, the report card which he gave those seven churches, you know, the, the negatives over there, oh, we have we have to uh, make sure that those things are not uh, part of us. Okay, and the, the very, very last section here has some samples uh, to ad uh, adapt that, uh, you know, church planters here want to uh, use so staff guidelines staff performance review document volunteer guidelines all this is on the website so you can access it download it use it uh, right membership booklet mentoring guidelines a lot of resources are there on the apc website uh, apcw.org just go take it use it it's free for uh, use so with that we wrap up you know the content for our uh, course on the local church so i'm going to leave this time open for some questions discussions and then we uh, will pray to close off this course so yeah the time is open anyone want to share discuss anything Okay, Christopher says, <clears throat> what uh, are some specific initiatives that have made churches be successful in city transformation? Could you give us an example of such a church in Bangalore besides APC who has done this? Okay, in city transformation, city transformation. Mm. I mean, there are a lot of uh, initiatives uh, Christopher, like community initiatives, social work uh, that different churches are engaged in. Mm. Okay. I Again, I don't uh, necessarily know the names of these uh, pastors, uh, but I have met them. I remember we, we said we have that uh, round table uh, pastors meeting that happens every month. So in that, people share. A lot of uh, initiatives that are happening, you know, community, social action uh, initiatives. Um, okay, so things like that. But yeah, I'm not able to give you the names of churches, uh, Christopher. Yeah, sorry about that. I think uh, maybe Pastor Ashish will be more aware, well aware. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I mean, I know small initiatives, but large ones, I, I, I can't uh, think as off the, offhand right now. Okay. Any anything else?
okay i think a lot to think about a lot to pray about and uh, i really hope uh, that whatever we have learned will help us in any capacity that god has called uh, each one of us with um, abhishek says uh, more details about the registration process so abhishek the uh, necessary details are there in the in the notes here uh, but for your local area registration process you have to go to a local lawyer and speak to them because every area has their own updates so you have to find out from them so they will tell you something like okay you need a trust deed for that trust deed you need certain people in your committee we need your ids you know uh, and you have to come and register like that it cost so much money it will take so much time so there's all that paperwork you have to go to your area and find out okay so i hope that helps yeah sure okay great great so yeah if there are no more questions i think we could uh, just pray and close uh, class and just request one of us to lead in prayer please mm, anyone Yeah, it's open. Anyone can jump in and read. Ah, uh, I'll press it first. Yes, yes, Prabhakar. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, we acknowledge your holy name. Thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity you have provided us, bestowed upon our life, Father. Thank you. Thank you for this. the local church classes. Over the past few months, we have been part of this wonderful journey, Pastor, uh, with Pastor Father. Thank you so much for guiding us through Pastor. Lord, uh, it's been a wonderful journey, and we have learned a lot about the local church and church establishment uh, in the city and the rural and urban areas, Father. Uh, you have provided us uh, in-depth knowledge how to establish the church and how to deal with the consequences, Father, in the ministry, Father. Thank you so much, God, for guiding us, for leading us, and thank you so much for for Pastor uh, Nancy Father over her life. Thank you for leading us and teaching her, us through her father. And I, I thank each and every uh, uh, members uh, for their sec for their time and dedication, Father. You have given the uh, given us all the grace and all the knowledge and all the patience to uh, and all the wisdom to understand your divine knowledge, Father. Uh, and Father, although we are wrapping up this class, this session, this semester, Father, but these classes and these teachings will be embarked in our lives, in our hearts for the rest of our life, Father. Thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. I give all glory and honor to your holy and I ask this prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. And God bless each one of you. Uh, and uh, really, I, I believe that uh, you know each, each of you is a blessing in the kingdom and he's going to use you in an amazing way. So what a privilege. Uh, thank you for your time and thank you for uh, listening. So God bless. Bye. We'll connect in another course. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Parker. Thank you, everyone.